Hi, in today's video I want to show you how to implement a custom QMU PCI device. So we will write a PCI device which will be emulated by QMU and the goal for today is when we are booting up our custom Linux kernel with our root file system, we want to be able to detect this custom QMU device. Luckily I hadn't figured everything out by myself, but I found a very good template. So here I found this article on LinkedIn describing how to implement such a QMU PCI device. And down here you can also see that the source code is also available in a Git repository. So this is a Git repository and here we can find the code for the QMU device, a Linux driver for it and also a user space application to interface the driver. Okay, so I already prepared a little bit, so let me navigate into the folder of our local copy of the QMU source code. And in here under hardware misc um, PCI echo device, I've already created a small yeah, PCI echo device. So the name of our device will be PCI echo device. The reason for this is because bar one will work as an, yeah, as in storage where we can write data to it and then later read it back. Basically the device will have two region or two bars. So bar zero is 60, 16 bytes in size and bar one is four kilobytes in size. Bar one will be used for just storing the data we write into it and bar zero um, has some functionality. So bar zero contains of 16 bytes. The first four bytes contains an ID so an ID we hard code into the register. At address four, we will have our, uh, we have an invert register. So when we are writing a value to it and read it back, we will get back the inverted value. Then we have an IRQ register. So this register, um, later we will add IRQ support to, for this card and the IRQ register controls them so we can fire our IRQs and acknowledge them. And then we have a random value register. Every time we read from this register, we will get a random value. And the way, so every bar is a memory region, which is defined here. So we have to um, map the memory region with some operation. So a little bit down here, we should be able to see this um, memory region operations. And here we are specifying which function is executed on a read which function is ex executed on the right, what's the endiness, and what is the allowed access width. So here for bar zero only four byte accesses are valid. And let me show you what we're doing here in the read function. So the read function has the following arguments. This is a pointer to the device we're reading from, which we are converting or which is our PCI echo device. Then we'll have a hardware address of the offset of the bar from which we want to read and we have a size and the return value is the value we read back. So here from the read the only thing we have to do is in case the address is our random value register we're returning a random value. Else we're returning just um, yeah, element address div divided by 4 from bar 0 and so we're getting back the value. Right is similar, so we have our device pointer, we have the address, and we have then we have the value we want to write and the size of the write access. And what we're doing here, so the ID register, IQ register, and random value register are currently read only, so nothing happens when we want to write to them, only if we have the invert or the invert register um, in this address, then we will save the inverted value in our bar zero array. Okay, but for bar one, we have to implement the read and the write. So this will be just a storage. And we should be able to access the bars with uh, one byte or eight bit, 16 bit, 32 bit and 64 bit accesses. So here in our device data struct, we have uh, in an array of, with four kilobytes and now we have to access them with the correct size. So the way we are doing it here in the read if um, 
the size is equal to one, so a one byte access, then everything is easy because all we have to do is we have to return um, PCI code dev echo device bar one on the address address and we are done. This will return an integer uh, an 8 bit value and we are done. But else, if the size is equal to 2 bytes, then we will need a pointer from the type UN6, uh, sorry, 60, 16 byte pointer, a bit pointer. I will call it pointer and I will set it to UN60T. Um, this address here. Yeah, and then I, we can return our pointer. And basically the same has to be done for the other two access widths. So in case the size is four, we have a 42 pointer or here a 64 if the size is eight. Okay, so so much for the read. Now let's implement the write, but therefore I can just copy these um, if else paths. So we don't need a return here, but this is equal to u int 8 t. Well, yeah. And down here we can change it to um, the value of the pointer will be in 60 t well and here we have 64 32 16 perfect now it's look, now it's looking good okay and then when we scroll down a little bit here again we have our memory region operations here we have a realize function so in this realize function we are initializing the device so here we are enabling or we are setting an interrupt pin. So later we need this when we're implementing our interrupts. And down here we are um, initializing our memory region. So the memory region is part of our device struct. And here are the operations with which or which we are going to overload. The device for which we want to use this memory mapped region and a number and the size in bytes. So in this, this case, it's 16 bytes for bar one. And with PCI register bar, we're registering our memory IO region as PCI base address space memory bar zero for our PCI device. And that's basically it. Here it would be also possible to pass IO space, but no, we will stay with memory space here. And basically down here, we are doing the same for bar, um, for bar one so this is our memory region here are our operations a name and the size and bytes and down here we are registering it and that's basically it then we have an empty uninit and instance init function and we have this class init function in this class init function we're initializing our config space so here for example we are assigning the vendor id the device id which will be beef in this example the class revision and the class ID. And down here, this function adds our device to, um, yeah, to QMU, so it's available. So here we're def uh, defining our interfaces and interface methods. Here we can see we are overloading pointers to our functions we have implemented earlier. And here we were making it known to QMU and that's basically it. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to um, add this file so it will be compiled and therefore I will go to hardware misc k config and in here we have this PCI test device and I will use this as a template so I will copy this in here and instead of test I have an echo device now. So this should be built into QMU if test device is set and it depends on PCI. So we need PCI support for this. Then we also have to edit mason.build and once again let's search for the PCI device 
and when PCI echo dev is true, then we will add the file PCI echo dev.c here. Okay. Cool. So now let's try to build it. The problem is because we have changed the configuration, we have to rebuild the whole QMU because we will now read the new configuration and then it will build everything. Uh, I have an error here. This is fast. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. One. Yes. So the, the problem here is in this read function, if I if none of these conditions is true, I don't return anything. So let me return ff 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 l here. Okay. So let's run make again. Okay. Okay. We don't have to recompile everything because I tested this before and the configuration wasn't changed because yeah from the last compilation, nothing changed. But if you are doing it with your build, it will recompile everything. Cool, and now if we start QMU system arm and list the device help, we can see all the available devices. And if we are creeping for echo, we can see our PCI echo device here for the PCI bus. Cool. And now I want to start up our Linux kernel with our root file system and search for the device. But therefore I will make one minor change in the root file system. So let me navigate to the root file system. And in here I will create a new folder called etc initd. And in here I will create the file etc initd rs rcs. So this is the init file, which will be automatically called by busybox before starting busybox. And what, are, what we are going to do here is we will mount our system file system to slash sys. And we will mount our proc file system to proc. So at least the system file system is needed for LSPCI to read out the PCI devices which are available on the bus. And we have to make this executable. Okay, so now let's zip it and let's cd back to our build. Okay, so now let me call, um, yeah, QMU system arm, our machine is word minus 2.10 because this machine has PCI support built into it. This here is our kernel image, our root file system, our kernel command line, no graphics, and now we will add the device PCI echo device here. So let's start this. Okay, it's looking good, we have a console. And up here we can see some PCI devices which have been discovered. And here we have one with the device number beef and vendor number 1234, which is a QMU vendor number. So this here should be our device. And if we execute a last PCI, we can see our custom device here popping up too. Cool. The problem now is this um, LS PCI, which is included in BusyBox, is very limited. So in the next video, we are going to build the complete LS PCI to see more information about our custom device. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.